In this video we're going to continue with mutations. So in the last video, which is required watching before you'll understand this, this one, uh, we talked about how you can add queries, which are structured like your UI tree, um, and idents uh, to your components to end up normalizing your database. And you end up with something like this. I've created a new dev card demo mutations part two. Um, and I do want to, I'm going to reload this and show you in the console down here, there's an error that happens or warning. Right, everything looks okay, but the warning says each child in an array iterator, this is a React warning. It's basically telling you that when you have adjacent things that come out of a collection, and that's this right here is what's causing it, um, as a child, if there's a collection there, the individual items in the collection have to have a key. Um, and this is really easy to fix in Fulcro, so we just go to the UI, UI to do item factory. If we know this is going to be a too many relation, then we for sure should have a key function and this can actually be a function on props uh, uh, and it turns out that keywords are functions that with that extract themselves from uh, extract their value from the incoming map so we can just use colon dbid as a function uh, that will extract a unique distinct value uh, for the child so that's real quick let's just get rid of that warning so you see it comes up looks looks clean now well, now that things are normalized, well, our mutations become quite easy, right? Our mutation for changing an item label, I don't even have to look at the UI now. All I have to do is say, which database table did I put those in? I'm going to swap on the state, and I'm going to let's see, change item label. Associ in at to do item by ID. Now I need the ID of which item I'm changing the label for, right? I'll just take that as a parameter, and then item label to text. There's my entire um, mutation. Now I can uh, I can make this a composable thing for using in other things, which is, is actually handy. Um, and I've adopted, for these I've adopted here recently, uh, just calling these with a star on the end, where you hand the state map in, um, and then whatever additional parameters you need, and then you take these parts and just put the state map here. Um, and then I also typically will define something like a to do, uh, maybe item ident, where if I give an ID, it gives me back the table name. So table. No, 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 sorry, to do item by ID, ID, and so that I can go through and, and say things like I want to use in a in the item ident for ID along with its field as my path. Right? Or you could go even farther further and even say um, something like this. And make it even cleaner. I'm playing a little fast and loose with the parentheses there. Okay, so that should be change item label, and then these become really pretty because now you can say change item label star. The state map will be passed in from the swap, uh, and then I can just pass the ID and text. And that comes in handy when I do things like clearing, clearing the item label or something like that. Like if we support something like hitting escape and have it be a different mutation, I can then reuse the manipulation in a way that's really clean to read. Um, and then if I want to combine more than one, um, right, you could pass a function of the state map here and thread state through uh, things like I want to change the item label and I want to check the box and I want to write, and this gives you something that then looks like this really nice sequence of operations on the state database. fast and loose with the parentheses here. I'm going kind of fast. Um, okay, 
So toggle complete, same sort of thing. I could define a helper. I'm gonna, um, I'm just gonna do it here. I think straight by hand, just to be a little, a little quicker. Uh, so I'm going to update in item path. We need the ID. Uh, Then the thing we're going to do at that path is invert its boolean value. Finish editing. So this was the one that just toggled our UI editing field. Well, it didn't toggle it. Um, it actually set it. And then we need to pass in that as a parameter now, right? Everything is now r relative to the actual item being edited. So now in to do item, all I have to do is fix my mutations so that change item label, I know the ID of the thing I'm trying to change. Finish editing. This guy's ID. Toggle complete. This guy's ID. And again, I'm having to unquote. And so now I should be able to at least see these updating in state as I click on them, and of course on the UI as well. Now, as a, just a quick side note, some of these operations are so common, particularly messing with localized um, like UI editing, like just toggling that. Uh, that there's some pre-written transactions for you that make these just a little uh, little nicer. So if all I want to do is change this back and forth from true or false, um, and I know it's just a UI local concern, it's not going to be a full stack operation, I don't need CQRS kind of things, uh, uh, writing a mutation for that's overkill. Um, toggle complete, mm, that one I might want, because toggle complete is something I might actually want to send over the network, and have it understood in a conceptual way, toggling a, an item complete. Um, so let's drop the the, um, the finish editing mutation, as I did. Yeah. And in the mutations namespace, the place that we found uh, def mutation, uh, there are some functions that can take the component and the name of the field. Now, the way these work, if we go and glance at it, I, I do want you to kind of understand this. Uh, is they actually uh, call their own mutation and that mutation uh, figures out via parameters that are passed into the action what the component's location is in the database. This ref field that comes in tells you uh, essentially the ident for that particular uh, database item. Um, so Toggle is doing nothing more than you know finding uh, this component via this ident. And so now these should still. Oh, I'm sorry. Finish editing is what I is what I changed. So I don't have a way of getting in yet. So let's add a way of getting in. So if we double click on the label, then we'll do an M this UI editing. And now I've got a way to edit my, my fields. Again, eliminating some of the mutation overhead for UI only concerns. I don't recommend using the, the these for anything but the UI concerns. 
Uh, that's really what they're here for, but it comes up so often that, that it's useful to have the helper functions. So that's your introduction to mutations part two.